two, one, and we are live. This is 2OF Entertainment. That is very regal, that music. <laughs> David did well, a good I job like, with, the, with the regalness of it. Here, yeah, we'll do it. Well, I just so put my hand on my heart when I see that. Oh, uh, that's nice. Uh, I do that, and it all makes me think it's moose. But uh, what do I know? So. Well, we have a few of those. They're running around a little bit. I got, them, I got one of them right, right over there that nobody can see. And unfortunately, when we set the new studio, I will be the only one that gets to see the moose that the artist sent us from Canada. Well, so. As long as you talk about the moose, then that's the main thing. That's good. That's the main thing. There you go. Yeah. Well, it's uh, How you good been? Seeing you again. It's been a while good since we you. chatted a little bit. We've been yeah. busy on both ends here. I and see uh, we've got, uh, again, we get a great artist again. <laughs> I always have a great artist. Um, That's true. Val Moker. Now, she yeah. she's an uh, award-winning artist, um, illustrator, um, right. realistic. And, I mean, if you like cowboy art and you like to see beautiful, like, horses and... Uh, I, I call them their lyrical paintings. Like they're telling a story. Right. Like they really do tell a story about an individual or a space or a place uh, in time, which tend to work really well for like book covers and people like a semblance. What's that story about? I, I want to get into that character. I want to feel like I'm, I know that person or understand about what's going to happen. So she has this great ability to sense that when she puts that into the work. And so got a good variety of stuff to show today and uh i, I just bring her on and we'll just cool. we'll bring her on her accolades are so big I can't, I can't say everything about her because she's just too much oh, good day. <laughs> there you go well val welcome welcome to canadian art today i'm going to disappear mind. because nobody really wants to hear me say "Ooh, pretty all day where you and paul can get into the nuances of brush strokes and how things are done me just going pretty nobody cares so have a wonderful show and i'll see you guys at the end of the show Cheers. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good day. Good talking good to you again. Yeah, we got our <clears throat> got a little test run done, and we know that everything works good. And now we know uh, we can show some of your imagery that goes along with a nice story. I mean, we like to really hear the background about your life a little bit, about your your art journey, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I've seen your work for years, and uh, I just like to know more more about that, like. So to help people understand a little bit, you know, where do things start from? Where do ideas come from? So I've given you a whole bunch of questions already without asking you a specific one. But where, where did your art journey actually start? Like, how did that start? And what? You know what? It really started when I was uh, six years old and I won my first art competition in school. I was asked, draw what Christmas means to me. So I had the Christmas tree, I had the angel, I had the Santa Claus, I had the presents. And so I was <laughs> all five dollars. I said, okay, this is what I want to do. And that was yeah. it. At six years of age. That's mm -hmm. that's amazing. And then you stayed to that. You haven't had to go work at Starbucks or places like that. Well, yeah. I had to I had to do that. I, I actually yeah. taught art because because I basically uh, I was in university and I was going for my BFA and, and then uh, one prof said to me uh, during the time this was in the eighties or seventies, eighties. What are you going to do with your art? What are you going to do with your art? Because at that point, it was very difficult for a woman to really get into art. And, and the world was very, very contemporary. And I couldn't understand it. Uh, coming off the farm, you know, you're looking at real subject matters. You didn't understand all the other other stuff that sort of went with it. And I never had the education. I had great teachers in, in junior high and high school that really uh, guided me. That was my, my hiding spot. I was always, uh, that was my place to be at noon hour. So I didn't, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, no. This, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I, I mean, I think I went through some of those early stages. Then my parents kind of talked me out of, well, my, my dad did, anyway, tried to talk me out of being an artist. Right. So I thought I you know, kind of had a hiatus for a few years and then I went back on track again. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. But it, your, were your parents supportive of, of my, what you Yeah. Doing? As farmers, which is really, which is really interesting because my dad's a farmer, believes in hard work. And he didn't deny what I wanted to do. And uh, like I said, when I went to university and then I 
this prof said, well, once you get into education, you still have your art. You still have a couple months off to do some art. So I became an art teacher. And I basically told the kids, first day, we're going to learn everything that I want to learn. <laughs> and that's what that's how I taught. Yeah. That, that's probably the best rule is if, if you can make yourself happy, that's what other artists are going to want as well, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's, sort of, that's sort of how artists in Canada do. So I, I kind of build artists in Canada how I would like to be treated myself yes. right and yes. so um that that's my plug <laughs> but uh you know let's just put a couple let's get our first image up here maybe Stephen can click that one up here and we'll just talk about okay you. so this image was the first western piece i've done i grew up on a farm i grew up we, we did we did cowboy stuff or what is deemed as cowboy uh, went to all the rodeos and stuff. My dad was really kin to that. And uh, um, yeah, so this was the first piece I actually drove. We're driving to Saskatoon and I saw these people uh, on the side of the road and I said, stop, I need to take this image. And I started talking with him. And uh, yeah, this was the first piece and I submitted to the Calgary Stampede and I won Best New Artist with this piece. Yeah, it's a beautiful piece. I mean, when you, when you look at a piece like this, um, and I have seen, you know, similar pieces by artists over the last, 30, 40 years that have painted cowboy types of imagery. And, you know, really to get that feeling of not only the figure, you know, you want to be a part of that moment, really, and understand this one is really nice because they're looking off to the one side and you're not telling me the whole story, but you sort of know what they're doing, right? And, yeah. that's a, and I think that's kind of the magic of storytelling is don't give away the whole story leave some of it for people to read into it exactly and a lot of several people asked me what tell me about your painting and i said no you tell me what you see because you know one person might see something another person might see something else but that's what makes it all very interesting so how did this one come about like were you literally, there literally hmm. just driving and the first question they asked me is this, you're not with the, you're not with the uh, SBCA or something like that. I said, no, 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 not with any any animal rights or anything. And I, I just want to catch you doing your job because I said this is your job. You know, they were branding cattle, and I says I want to see the emotional aspect behind it. So you know, there's a you know this is a family, and then the brothers were involved. Like anything involving um, the cowboy life in Saskatchewan, the the cowboys, they stay true to their own. And I've learned that in traveling all through uh, uh, Saskatchewan because I did a, a book based on a cowboy. And um, they, 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 the city exists, but it's not their life. And they like the chaps, the whole, you know, they don't have to wear that. But they do because that is, uh, that is their uniform, per se. And, yeah. <clears throat> uh, yeah. And it's just, and, and unfortunately, I, I drive by and go Saskatoon. I cannot find this spot again. It's gone. I just it's can't. Wrong. Yeah. yeah. Pop up rodeos. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, no. a lot of times that is what it is. A lot of times there are, is a crowd area out in the field and that's where they'll pull a trailer alongside and they'll, yeah. they'll run the cattle into those, into those areas. And that fenced in area is only used seasonally, maybe yeah. not at all. And it'll, you know, it falls apart and they move it over. Maybe they sell the property and they move it somewhere else. So, but it's uh, yeah, it's, but it was brought to me. It was like it was brought to me especially. And I believe in that. I believe things. And that's how a lot of my images come to me. They either uh, come to my head. I'm dyslexic. So I have to uh, um, sort of conjure up or come up with ideas in my head first. And then once I come up with the idea, I will see. I'll either get a model or something that will get to that if I don't find a situation like this. Yeah. <clears throat> well, model situations, they, they, they work. But it's so nice when serendipitously you drive by and it, they're all there. Like it's yeah. just the moment is there, and it's great that they let you uh, be a part of their day when you're yeah. when you're doing that. Because a lot of times artists are, you can sit in the city somewhere and in, in a, between some bushes and draw somebody in the park or something, or you can sit in the city and uh, draw people walking on the street or at a cafe. But you kind of incognito you're kind of hiding a little bit you don't want a whole bunch of people around you while you're doing that mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. do you do any plein air painting at all you no no i'm too uh, i just can't uh my process is i have to get my head has to uh 
connect with my hand and it's I can't do it that quick I, it ha there's a there's a long process for me and I can't fight it I can't move it forward it's just the way it is no so the choice of medium is uh well this one was a watercolor I started off as a watercolorist um then I swung into acrylic and now I'm oil yeah the oil paint yeah uh -huh. oil is so nice and rich once you get into uh -huh. it's uh -huh. hard to uh, I'll switch back and forth a little bit but mostly oils again I'm back into yeah, I'll wait for it to dry a little bit. I'm just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oils do <clears throat> oils do make me a little impatient because they yeah. I, I like the immediacy of acrylic, but uh, for for glazing and layering. But uh, I think uh, at the end, I, I, I tend to like uh, oil paint myself. But uh, so let's just move on here. Well, let's see if we can. Get another. <clears throat> yeah, we have a couple of a series of. You sent me a bunch of images that are. Cowboy related, and then some are other things that you're working on, and which are beautiful. Um, so, when does a when does a illustration become a painting, or a painting is an illustration? Can you define the difference between the two? How it's um, difficult. Yeah, I find it's difficult, and I'm, I sometimes I go, "Is this a painting or is it an illustration?" This is a painting because this was a. Um, specific person that I caught at a specific time. I think, I, yeah, that's a fine line between illustration and a painting. Mm. Um, this, uh, everything, there's a story to every piece that I do. There's a something I run into, some kind of problem. And in this case, this is an ornery critter, but uh, um, that I had to deal with. And I painted four, four, four paintings of them. And I saw him the other day, and I think I'm gonna go for another one of him. He just has a look about him that's very, very unique. And he's got an energy that I really can relate to. And he allows me to paint him. Wow. Some people won't, especially the cowboy, uh, their life is private. Uh, I ran into one cowboy in the south, uh, uh, eastern, no, western part of uh, Saskatchewan. He didn't like the fact that I was photog uh, photographing him and because, you know, catching him in action. He didn't like it. This one, this cowboy doesn't like it either, but he accepts me. And that's the difference. And I don't know. It's so, yeah. Well, some, I guess some people, they like the fact that an artist is going to do their portrait in, in, in a sense, it's their portrait, um, you know, for longevity or <clears throat> for whatever reason they would, you know, um, I think some of the models are, um, they're overjoyed with it in, inside of it that somebody wants to do that for them, mm -hmm. but they, they hold back a little bit because they're a little insecure about that part. Like how much gets revealed in a painting, you'd be surprised how much comes out in mm -hmm. a painting. And maybe that is part of the reason they don't, they don't want everything revealed. And as an artist, sometimes you can pull information out of a portrait that, they don't maybe want there. I mean, it's not cosmetic, it's internal. I know mm -hmm. you understand that. And mm -hmm. I do as well. There, there's a, there's an inner feeling in a good portrait mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. more so than just a depiction of that person. And he so, was, a, he was a series that I did because this is called the Friday Cowboy. Yeah. So I uh, traveled through Saskatchewan and I've got the Monday Cowboy, which is like three years old, the two, every, every day the cowboy gets older. So this cowboy at this time was, you know, early 50s. And then the Saturday cowboy was older and he did certain things. And the Sunday cowboy was, was, is, was the oldest. And beside each image was uh, cowboy poetry that a fellow from Alberta has oh, written yeah. to, to tie in with the story of each of these cowboys. Because I sat down even after I photographed them and said, okay, you know, I want to know more about you. And this particular person does not look like a Saskatchewan cowboy. Like his, <laughs> his dress is very different. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, we, we talk about that, you know, you know, regalia that, uh, or that certain people wear, he said, is that traditional to the, to that person or that culture? And I think sometimes cowboys, they, they take from different cultures as to how they feel they like, maybe it, it's influenced by where they've been or travel, say they've been to Wyoming and met people and cowboying down there, then they come up here, they have a bit of a, uh, a different, uh, I guess, regional look to them maybe sometimes, a certain type of scarf or it could be the way they wear, do they put a feather in their hat? I don't know. There's just, there's certain things that 
uh, becomes personalized. Like you said about this person, he yeah. has a, but I like his face. He's, he's very, he's very serious. He's, he's stern, very serious. And he's very stern. He's very serious. And that is his personality. Yeah. No, and that time he had a job to do and he gave me part of his time. <laughs> Much to his chagrin. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's lovely. <clears throat> Me, I mean, I a lot of times we'll be painting landscapes mostly and doing different things. But when you, a portrait of somebody who just sits in a chair with a colored background, uh, say a political portrait where they're just they're just depicting that person in a regal manner against the wall and hanging up in Parliament, uh, where these ones you're actually pulling a piece of the horse, you know, there you can see the rough nature of his hands. You got. There's a lot, like I said, there's a lot of storytelling going on mm -hmm. in this one piece. I mean, in most pieces that you're doing, but specific, you know, the feeling of the leather, the feeling yeah. of the, the, you know, does that match a little bit the leather of his face? You know, yeah. you've got the understanding, uh, you know, that, yes, you can put that in. And uh, that's what I'm saying. You reveal sometimes more than what that person thinks that they're revealing. Maybe you can't really, sometimes you just can't hide from a good painting this one this is a beautiful piece thank you beautiful thank you. now is this a watercolor as well no this is oil this is an oil okay the other and one you... friday cowboy was acrylic now this is oil now this now, side... now, now pronounce that for me noble <laughs> okay <laughs> let me get my word again pasqual wintontis it's creek it means buffalo pride Yes. There you go. And I didn't even want to try it. I mean, <laughs> it has more letters than I can handle for yeah. today, in the morning. Yeah. But uh, no. And can you tell us a little bit about this image? We got a ghosted image in the background and it's frosty out. Like it's yeah, really it's very, a beautiful frosty day. Uh, frosty out. Uh, what, uh, and um, uh, this is sort of my uh, uh, the aspect that this, this buffalo is, is here now. But he is he is walking ahead of the go of the ghost of the past. When you think the buffalo has been on our on our land for a long, long time, so this is sort of the significance that you know we keep going forward and, and uh, through uh, duress and stress and whatever that the buffalo will survive. And uh, I just felt it was he was almost so regal in his way uh, with the glistening uh, snow on him. Uh, yeah, it just it just felt right in doing something like this that he yeah. had. Is he was he was robed with these crystals, if you want to call it, because he did sh shimmer. But I didn't want him shimmer, shimmer, and make him shimmer. But I just uh, uh, yeah. the fact that yeah, the animal has, yeah, yeah, he looks like he's been through somebody's doily a little bit. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he's, well, it was frosty morning. No, he is very yeah. beautiful. And we, you know, our buffalo. I think we're slowly bringing them back, and because uh, they've been decimated for century, they've been, um, you know, they've been for yeah. a long time north of the border south of the border they've they've been right. uh, yeah. decimated but they're bringing the herds back again understanding that they're they are part of the land and uh, and our indigenous people are really pushing hard for that i mean yeah. i mean everybody just loves them you don't i learned with bison though and if you if and, and a lot of them are I, I won't call them tame but they're their farmers are farming them just like they do cattle and you do not want to try and get across that field. <laughs> no, no, you don't. No, you don't. They move very quickly, and they'll be waiting yes, for you when you get across the other side. Uh, this this girl that took us to the buffalo, she has a she she says her family just gets uh, uh, right off from the SGI vehicles because you never know when these guys are going to charge. And my dad was in the back seat, and he goes, "Oh, oh he was really concerned because he's you know he's in his nineties." And oh, I says, "Don't worry, she's got the pedal; she'll ready. We'll cruise if we have to." But yeah, she says, "Out of the blue, they just you know if something sparks them or whatever, they just go, and you can't stop them." <laughs> so yeah. there's not, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, there's not too many really so-called tame ones. No, no. <laughs> when you no. leave them out on their own in the on the prairie there, and they're fenced in, but uh, yeah, they're not not like cattle; they're not docile like cattle. Yeah. Yeah, and they do move quickly. Yeah, uh, but surprisingly. Yeah, yeah, but something that triggers them. I just don't know. It's just that. Yeah, it's a. Yeah, beware. That's all I can say. <laughs> Always beware. Well, they have that same kind of look in his face as that last cowboy had. You know. They, yeah. They, yeah. They, yeah. Exactly. They have something in their mind, and they said, "You're not going to change it." And yeah. uh, but no, it's a lovely piece. Um, oh, beautiful, beautiful piece of uh, work on there. 
Now I put these two together. They're not the same. Yes. They're, they're two separate images, but we have so many images to show people. I just excited about showing people. Thank you. Your, well, this your, is the same person. So but he's yeah, person. same model, but two different options and yeah. uh, doing yeah. different things. So, yeah. and I didn't realize that, but that, uh, yeah. good that you told me that. So historical types of things, how much research do you do? Like, for, I do a lot of research. I do a lot of research. I have to, mm -hmm. and and you can't really. Um, the internet has some history, and you know a fair bit, but but actually books have a lot more history. I'll go to archives if I can. Uh, and in this case, this gentleman had all this information. Oh wow! I, I had met him at Dodge City in Edmonton, and he came walking by, and the way he was dressed, I just oh my gosh, I just. And I, I just blurted out stupid, like, you know, I'd just love to paint you. And then he retorts back, you made my heart sort of like an eagle. And I'm like, what? Who says that? And I said, so we developed a connection, a really good connection from there. Wow. He was, and he was telling me he had all this regalia, all the, because he was part Apache, part Caucasian, or whatever you want to call that, Métis. And he had all this uh, in, information that he was uh, able to share with me. Nice. It, mm -hmm. It's sort of like you're meant to be. It, yes. It's, you're. Yeah. You find those connections happen more often. Yes, just like often. the just like the, the the cowboys branding, like it just comes to me. You know, you put it out there. You're saying you want something different. You want something unique, and uh, and I I've been so fortunate in all my travels. I've met some wonderful people with these interesting stories to tell me. Yeah, no, yeah. It's uh, when I just find that when there's certain things that connect and at the right time and the right it's meant to be like mm -hmm. you're, you're in the right place at the right time. And, uh, and I've been in the other place where you're out of sync and you just got to walk away from things and move yeah. on to something else. And the other one will come back. So don't, I'm telling artists, don't force things to happen. No. You know, you can, you can nurture them and add stuff off to the side of your plate and just keep building information. Mm -hmm. But if it doesn't feel right to get in and force yourself to do something, that your body is not prepared yet. Your mind mostly is not prepared yet. Neither it's insecure in that it doesn't have enough information yeah. or the skill set's not there or the vibe isn't there, right? There's, there's exactly. like, if that person did not want you to paint them, that's a vibe you get. Yeah, exactly. It's almost immediate and you, it's really hard to paint and depict that person in the way you want. Anyway, I just, so <laughs> the other person, yeah, He's dressed in a, is that a, a, a blanket on the right? Yeah, that's a Hudson Bay. Hudson, yeah, Hudson Bay blanket. Blanket, yeah. 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 So this is their fur trader. So where would where would this imagery go? Where was this for? Actually, the one on the left was sold at Stampede. Oh, no, they both were sold at sold At the Calgary Stampede. Yeah. 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 Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Perfect location. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect location. Alberta, like, Alberta likes history. They, they yeah, thrive on history. And really, the trappers were in Saskatchewan as well, but it doesn't seem to ignite anything here in Saskatchewan. Well, Alberta, yeah. they love their history. They, they, they love the different aspects of what their province depicts, and they nurture it. So, yeah. Well, the Stampede has a history in itself, right? So it mm -hmm. draws a huge, um, I guess, a, a ranching content. People that either grow raised on a ranch or a farm, Yes. They gravitate to that because it was kind of a lifestyle that they were familiar with, whether on their own farm or ranch or, or neighbors, right? They were part yeah. of yeah. of that life. And like you said, history is a big is a big thing in Alberta. Um, and it's it's redneck country and we all know that. You, just, yeah. Yeah. you, you like stuff that's a little rough and tumble. Yeah. And, uh, you know, whether it's oil, whether it's the oil industry or whether it's our, you know, history of oil as well. So. Mm -hmm. Not that Saskatchewan doesn't have it. It does, but it does. But it, I don't know. It's just a little different here. It doesn't sort of accept it. It's sort of it's, it's not sure which what where the tumbleweed is grow is rolling sort of thing. A <laughs> little bit of this, a little bit of that, but nothing yeah. is specific. Yeah, yeah. That's not a bad thing. It's good to no. have a, a defined line a little bit to understand. But to understand where to go to get this is important too. Yeah, yeah. I love this horse. This is just oh, this is phantom. Phantom. Mm -hmm. and, uh, a ghost one Appaloosa was very rare. It was uh, the, this uh, breed of horse was almost defunct. His grandfather was stolen from Gravelberg uh, to the States. And this friend of mine, which we st again, we connect with people, was able to bring back the grandson, which is this phantom from the States. He was, this phantom was used for breeding. And she was able to bring back 
um, that the DNA of the post one apple is 99.99999%. This oh. one, yeah. yeah, it was a beautiful horse. He shimmers, his um, skin is almost a silvery color, uh, uh, very fine hair. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of, of hair on him like most horses do. Uh, so it's, it, that's what gives it the ghost, a ghostly image at night. So when the moon shines, it, he's got this ghostly blur to him. Yeah, yeah. Nice animal. Yeah, the light, the light, the way it's set on there too. It's almost like it's been painted on them, like the way the light is sitting mm -hmm. on his, on the hair on the side of him. So that's what that is, though, right? Light shining from one onto him from one direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and it's not too uh, garish or anything. But he all, and I look at this a little bit. And I can see a landscape in there. Yeah. And if you keep looking, you might see another animal in there. <laughs> Maybe see another animal. Okay. Well, you know, I, I love that about pieces of work where it's not always about the one thing. I think that gives things life on your wall. When you look at it, you see a number of things. But I was just saying if I cropped up from the bottom, so you only see his neck and his back, and you crop up. You can see it's almost like a long grasses on a in a on a winter on a winter field. You know, mm -hmm. it's a beautiful. Yeah, no, I, and I like equine horses. It's just I'm not a real horse guy. Like they, mm -hmm. they scare they scare me. <laughs> they're bigger than me. Like they're, they're big. Just, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I I've got a not a great horse experience that I was on, but it was a personal one. But it was just like, but I love I love how horses can look different. They, they are, each one is an individual, just like a portrait. Exactly. Um, yeah. yeah. And uh, all animals are like that. And I don't know how people can paint animal portraits. And you got to pull out the personality of that animal. So uh -huh. people that know them understand uh -huh. that that's what that animal, it's not just another horse. Uh -huh. It's actually that horse that you're actually talking yeah. about. Yeah. It's, you know, it's a, yeah, a lovely piece. Thank you. Yeah. So where did this piece come from? I mean, Actually, my daughter went to China on a, a school excursion. So I said to her, please, can you bring me back some images? I'll give you some money. And because uh, I believe in paying for the models, right. uh, I'll give you some money and, and, and you pay if any models come into mind, you paint. Well, this fella, it was really interesting. That bar behind that wall behind was like old moving into new. Because in the back was old, old I can't remember the name of the, of the village. It was very old. There was nothing new. But as soon as you crossed over into the area that he's in now and you continue on, uh, Naomi told me that there was a McDonald's and everything else. So, but this man is blind. Oh. Okay. And uh, he's got his, the, the uh, wool there, uh, neatly uh, sewn uh, wool. That suit is that nubbly wool. Uh, uh, and, and, uh, Again, the, the cane is an old ancient cane. He's blind, but yet he has a watch on that he's very proud to wear. <laughs> yeah. So there's oh. the old with the new, the contrast of the old with the new. And he just he just strikes me. I just thought he was just such an interesting fellow. I had to paint him. Yeah. Yeah, he has a he has a very humble and kind look about him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He, he and he was probably just tickled pink that he got somebody that wanted to take his photo. And yeah. you have to receive a little bit of money for having this photo yeah. taken. Probably yeah. never thought that was going to happen. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, and you know, painting people of diversity, it's not easy for a lot of people, and it seems to be quite easy for you to to move from one ethnicity to another, like painting people of different origins, uh, rather than just painting white people all the time. So, I just find it's interesting because you learn about the culture and you get to know. And besides with this man, of course, I didn't get to know, but every other situation, I get to know the person. I spend time with the person. And sometimes in spending time with the person, I don't develop a connection. I think, no, this one's not going to work. If I don't have that connection, if I have that, I don't know, spirit, we're, we're, we're connecting even without words, I can take that information and put it on canvas. But if it's not there... Because I, I did all the cowboys, and I used to have cowboys coming up to me and saying, well, you know, can you paint me too? And I said, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, it's it's different when somebody approaches you yeah, than when you approach them, mm -hmm. uh, for sure. And I can see that. Because after a while, it becomes like a machine, right? You, yeah, no. you know, and it's just like this big portrait booth, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, you end up getting lots of help when you have a portrait booth, let me tell you. Oh. 
Oh, yeah, I bet you do. Yeah. <laughs> I have, a, I have a quick story that I did that at one of my daughters. Um, it was a fun night at school. And I, I said, I would do a bunch of care, character booths. For, it's for raising money for the school. So I said, okay. So I, I got there about six o'clock. It was going to end at nine. <clears throat> and <clears throat> my wife had made me a sandwich. And I don't think I had hardly time to sit down and had the paper going. And the lineup of kids was out to the door of the gymnasium. And we had to finally give wristbands and cut it off. And I did. I did 60 characters in Why? three hours and I was just burnt out, but I had parents sitting over top of me. Oh, you forgot to put his eyebrows in you. Can you put a hat on him? I says, the thing cost $2. It was a, it was $2 and the kids were giving up a lot of their time for all the little activities they could do to stand in line. And the parent, I said, this is a $2. <laughs> I mean, short of drawing a quick Charlie Brown. That's basically what it was. <laughs> yeah. With the ears and a, a thing and Put the guy's T-shirt on and done. Next. Oh my! Oh <laughs> that my! Was fun. It was fun, but it was fun. But it was a it was a learned thing that you will get help. Yeah. <laughs> and it's sure. supposed to come from the parent. Yeah. yeah. yeah this, there's another one here. This. What's the story behind this one? Uh, this one's called Pearl de Tempo, which is uh, sort of a takeoff on Veneer's uh, 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 pearl earring, a girl with a pearl earring. Right. Uh, which this is what it means, it, referring to the pearl earring, which has really got nothing to do with the whole subject matter at all. So uh, this was, um, I just feel the world is, is um, kindness is being forgotten. Uh, I think we're gone so far on the other side. And for three years, uh, three years prior, like the 23rd, uh, 22nd, 21st, I really didn't paint. I worked on commissions. And this was the only painting I did. And, and I listened to people complaining, this, that, whatever. And I figured, I think I need to do something like this. And I've always wanted to do the contrast of, uh, of a cultural piece and a cockade, you know, two mm -hmm. cultures, basically. Um, really, because uh, I remember a prof saying, she, they, she asked uh, a bunch of people in the class, how many races are there? And everybody's all, oh, 12, 20, 30, 40. She says, there's one. Just a human race. So really, this is what I wanted to depict: kindness yeah. within the human race. So were these models? You hired models? Yeah. For this? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Good choices. Yeah. Very nice. Thank you. No, it's very uh, uplifting, I guess, and it's it's a thoughtful piece because you're you're really thinking about uh, what does this mean, and you can mm -hmm. see the contrast, and so you can read a lot of different things into this, mm -hmm. but you know, you know the kindness. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, she's got her hand on his shoulder and there's, there's a lot of, there is a, a wrapping of feeling a little bit for the two. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of a nice, uh, rather than just two images, one overlapping the other one, right? The other mm -hmm. one is starting to come forward as well. So nicely designed. Oh, yeah, nice Thank design piece. Yeah. yeah. So, so this one is really different than the other ones. This has got a ton of color in it. And it, looked like <laughs> you, you, it looks like you had a lot of fun painting this one. Well, yeah, this one is, I had been at, uh, what show was I at? I was at a show in Calgary. Uh, I can't remember. And I was driving back on the Monday. And when I come back, I had my CDs. I don't have the radio on or anything because of different stations and stuff, whatever, if I get music on it. And, uh, you know, I'm driving back and I get home and um, my friend calls me. and says, did you see what happened? Did you see what happened? And I said, no, no. Well, turn to this, turn to this. Well, this was the day that I camped that day before September 11th was oh the crisis that hit the States. Yeah. Prior to that, I had photographed all of these little kidlets in my backyard. <laughs> and, and, and the country's coming together is the name of the piece. So starting from the left to the right, uh, uh, she's Mexican, East Indian, Afro-Canadian, Caucasian, Japanese, Greek, First Nations. I tried to get... Uh, as many nations as I possibly can that I knew of parents didn't think that I was chasing their kid for some bad thing. Um, <laughs> no, so no. this is my backyard. My backyard is not this nice. This is the power of a power of the brush to make the backyard look nice. <laughs> and uh, but I threw the balloons in and I start thinking I want these kids in, you know, with everything that's going on in the world, we've gone so far to the one side, we're forgetting the basics of life. And so uh, primary colors, red, yellow, blue, secondaries are, are, are purple, are orange, and green. I'm saying we have to get back to the basics and, and take care of what we have. The balloons, again, are a complement. In front of the yellow is a purple balloon. It's on 
one of the uh, red is a green balloon to show that every culture is important and should be respected as such. And then the top left and right, there are these two little bubbles. Well, one okay. bubble right above the East Indian girl and right on <clears throat> North America, South America, and the other side oh, is nice. Africa, Australia. Yeah. And that's where the name call, uh, comes from, countries coming together. Yeah. Where is this painting now? Uh, the original went to a uh, client in Alberta, and um, I sold it at a horse show, ironically. And, uh, uh, and then, yeah, yeah, so yeah. that's what she has. And she takes it, she says, she takes it to her church. She told me about it. She takes it to the church, and, and she puts the painting up, and all the little kids come around, and they don't ask questions. They just sit and look at it. And I thought, oh, gosh, that makes me feel so good. Yeah, yeah. yeah the connection is there, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, it's great that she saw that vision in 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 the piece to to want it because I think it's it's a juicy painting and uh, I mean it's got a lot more color in it than so you, say your cowboy pieces but they oh, yeah. pieces, they're kind of dusty anyway they're kind of dusty yeah. guys but uh, yeah this one has a really nice uh, meaning as well so it's got a no, it's really it's, how big a piece is this one this one was forty by sixty yeah so it's a it's a pretty large. It's yeah. a large piece of work. And so I had, so again, like I said, I had all these images taken and I had the canvas chosen. <clears throat> so the day after I came back, I started on this piece. It had to be done. Yeah. So where are your influences from? Where, what, what influences in your background? Where would you say? <laughs> I just, I don't know. I'm all over the place, which is really kind of bad to some extent. I guess I'm a maverick in a lot of ways. Um, mm. um, I do, when I taught, I, I always went back to art history. I actually hated art history when I was going to university. But as I started teaching art and really getting involved in finding out uh, what was the intention of these pieces that different uh, uh, historians had done and everything else, I started going back and actually relearning the art history again. So I'm very much uh, akin to, the to say, Baroque uh, expressionism, um, a uh, nouveau. Uh, I, I like those kind of. Uh, yeah. That's I guess where my lighting. I've got the contrast of dark to lights, and that's you know the broke. And I used and I used art history images for my teachings. Right. In high school and junior right. high, I used them. I figured the kids you have to know. And that's when I was teaching in Prince Albert. And I'm thinking, why shouldn't they know? Why why shouldn't they know who Van Gogh is and and who Veneer who's, who he is or or Clint is or you know they should know these names. Yeah. yeah. You know, the names of uh, context for mm -hmm. conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So what art galleries are you with? Are you with any art gallery? I, I am not with one art gallery, and that's by choice. That's by choice. Is that because you're a maverick? Is that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, well, I, I, you know, and I hate, you know, sometimes uh, galleries can pigeonhole you a little bit. Um, you know, I want this type of painting or that kind of work. And sometimes the artist says, I, I feel like doing other ones. I've had other artists that have said that about, um, they're tired of painting mountains, for instance. And they said, I don't want to paint any more mountains. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. And they go on and move on to something else. But the gallery wants certain, they know certain work sell. And you can understand why they ask that of their artists and how yeah. artists, they'll move through the system because after a while they get tired of say that. Um, I guess you get pigeonholed a little bit as to what you want to do. And this happens to a lot of artists that if you paint the same way, the same subject matter for a long, long, long time, it's really hard to switch and have your audience follow you. It, mm -hmm. if, if, if all you ever did was paint horses, it's really hard to tell people that, well, I do people portraits too. I do these other mm -hmm. things. Well, you're only known for doing one thing. So it's yeah. nice that you do that and you do what you like to do and, you know, you take chances and at a certain point you do have to give up some of those other opportunities, I guess, if they were call them yeah. opportunities. Yeah. But yeah. you do go, you'd go and do art shows, right? You go to yeah. Stampede and you, so you find your markets anyway, relative yeah. to yeah. you choosing where you want to go. So yeah. that's, yeah. yeah. That's, and I've had to, and I've had to readjust this three years of working on commissions. I basically became dormant and I think hmm. I personally came up to a wall and, 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 uh, was time to change i think i was i was just tired of painting sort of commercial somewhat commercial you know every one of my pieces have a story they're not randomly put down there's a lot of thought process and composing and everything else and planning and sometimes sometimes pieces take uh two to three years to plan the, the, the sequence so there's a there's an intention to there's a purpose there's a maybe a story that that i want people to, to pick up on or a feel-good situation uh so 
you know, I, I said, so now I'm actually, it's not that I'm, I'm getting older. Yes, I am older. But now <laughs> looking at uh, maybe having a collection, maybe actually putting together a collection, uh, a series of uh, pieces uh, and then take off from there and see what happens. Yeah. No, that's great. Yeah, great idea. I like this one. There's there's two in this series we're going to show. So people, this is image number one. And we'll have, there's another one that goes with this one. Um, again, a model probably that you hired to do this in your photography and uh, work through it. Can you tell me the reason for this piece? Like, this one, yeah, this is, uh, this is another COVID piece, by the way. <laughs> It's a really nice piece during COVID. Yeah, we, um, we have a lot of artists that have had, <laughs> they had the opportunity to paint for three years. Yes. Yeah, okay. um, I was drawn when I was uh, six years old. And I, I remember it being uh, very euphoric and uh, flipping around the water and, and not feeling scared at all. It was, it was a very peaceful scenario. And, and because of that, I wanted sort of to take that, how she's relinquishing herself to whatever the whatever what will happen or whatever the world will give her or whatever this is so i you know I, I this was a lot of time spent to get her to understand she's a really good model and i she catches on really quickly we're really in sync with each other but sometimes uh sometimes we have to work a little harder on so her arm is partially up and her face is up but everything else is going down uh and that she's accepting if it's meant to be if it's meant to be if it's not meanwhile when i almost drowned my dad had a suit on, of course, those days, we, we went to the beach, I don't know why, he had just changed out of his uh, bathing suit and put on a suit because we we're ready to go, and he had to run into the water with his suit on, he was not a happy person, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so this is, this was, uh, uh, this is probably the start of really, really painting authentic art of my, of me, right, yeah, yeah, so this is like looking in a mirror, really. This is this is basically like you being in that water at that. Yeah. At, but this is a more mature age than at your early age. Yeah. You're feeling yeah. like when you were six, what it was like to be in yeah. the water. Yeah. They're hard. It's hard to paint that, especially with a uh, a mature artist or a mature model. I guess you're looking at that, yeah. trying to, you know, a kid swimming in the water though. I guess wouldn't uh, it would convey a different feeling. It would. If you, if you had a child there painting, try to do that with a young child, it would be different than you couldn't. I don't know if you could say I, that it was you. Try to. I can only imagine that'd be like telling like a cat or a dog how to do something. I don't know how you <laughs> could get to do it. It just wouldn't happen. It just wouldn't happen. Yeah. 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 Have you found that with some models, it's easier to work with some than others? And yes, yes. Uh, uh, this model, I painted several pieces, just like the cowboy. I paste, painted several images of him because I know how to work with him. Uh, this model, I uh, she's easy to connect with. Uh, uh, we just, like I said, we just have this this connection or feeling. Or um, sometimes I don't have to say anything. She'll just see the look in my eyes, or I'll I'll tell the story prior. This is what I'm expecting from this and this and this, and then she'll come together. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and sometimes it takes work. Sometimes I had a model. She spent a couple hours with me because I just couldn't get her to um, understand the feelings I wanted her to convey. And uh, so there's a lot of, uh, you know, I don't push him. It's a lot of chatting. You know, do you want to call? Do you want to I find, yeah. Do you find the model sometimes gives you information that you normally don't get, ask them to do? Like that you find is uh, it's bonus or it's value added in a model? Sometimes it is because, you know, they might see fear, represent fear in a different way that I would personally represent fear, right. what I think fear should be. Uh, that's just an example. Uh, she might have a model might have just a totally different aspect of what fear would be. So, yes, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. That's why a lot of artists, they tend to go back to the same models. A lot of times they, they get a they develop a rapport yeah. with them, but it's uh, your cowboy wouldn't be doing the same thing in this water. <laughs> no, I get a lot of swearing from him, believe me. Yeah, yeah, you know, I don't get in water like that. No, no yeah, that's her again. That's her again. Yeah, is that a watermark you put in in the work? Yeah, that, that's part of the watermark. For yeah. That. So this is a combination of acrylic and uh, oils. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, yeah, it has a lighter feeling. There's a. Um, I don't know with the fish i guess i'm just gonna yeah it's gotta it's what is a, 
it, it, I call it rhythm in nature, how uh, we are visiting Earth. Uh, we're visitors on, 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 a, on this planet. And, and uh, uh, you know, with the COVID and everything else was going with COVID, and I thought, you know, uh, nature has a rhythm to everything that happens. You know, they say things happen every 100 years. It's cyclical and everything else. But everything happens with nature. You know, some year you'll have more rabbits than you will have more coyotes, etc. There's There's a rhythm to the nature. And right. in this case, with the with the fish and the water, uh, I I liked her image in this, and I figured, how can I tie in, uh, tie in some nature aspect and keep it very simplistic, so that there's a little bit of looking of the view for the viewer. So, is there a bit of a world background in there? Is there a little feeling of the world? And I knew you were going to say that. Maybe. <laughs> maybe I like maybe, and it, it almost feels like handwritten. You know, there's some handwritten information that you've included. Yeah. And yeah. It's yeah. different than your other stuff. That's all I'm saying. There's, there's some yeah, you've added some yeah. written material in there as well, and uh, and left us some uh, ideas to to search out. You know, uh, nicely I'm done. Playing different things. And oh, then yeah. you do this one, this sparkliest thing I've ever seen. It's just like <laughs> oh, almost, yeah. It's it's a candy box. It's just full of beautiful. Uh, pieces of gems i guess this is this is this is my unique still life i did uh, for a client i she, she wanted me to do this particular piece she asked me uh to do a painting for her opening and she says uh, uh i need something special and i said i said what makes you who you are this was the question i asked her and then she gave me this answer so this was who makes her who she is. She's a jeweler, obviously, and uh, uh, she works with different crystals, different gemstones. And uh, when I started playing around and looking at this, uh, I, like light and shadow, I love light and shadow. I love playing with lights and shadow. So I thought, okay, I've never painted this, and how can I how can I handle all this? And <clears throat> yeah. I had to take it a section at a time and, and like, you know, pearls are very different than this and the, the reflection, the refraction and everything else that goes with it. It was an interesting, uh, interesting. Con I love this piece because it was so it was so challenging. I learned so much doing this piece. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a uh, real use of color. And uh, like you said, you got to work it in sections because it's very complicated. Uh, your mind can get lost very quickly as to what row you're on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's like yeah. It's like knitting, but I say I don't know what row I'm on anymore after a while. You just oh, I, I know. Yeah. Yeah. No. And then we go to this beautiful piece, a down nice downtown piece yeah. here and just uh, a night scene. Beautiful. I don't know, you can explain a little bit about it and I mean there's well, beautiful textures happening in the wa in the on the road in the foreground and yeah, I, I don't just think love, you can see that. Yeah, I just love when sh light shines in water. To me, they look like jewels. Like they just look jewels. It just sparkles and everything else. I said, finally, I said, okay, I got to do something. So it was raining horrendously here in Regina. And uh, so my son came out and I said, okay, you have to be my spotter. So I'd go on the street and so I just take images and I tried to set up the timing so that I can get different colors of the light, so that I can get different, it, it's impossible. I was out there a long time, but, uh, and then I thought, okay, and now I look at this piece, and I'm thinking, how, what can I make it, what size should I make it to really present itself? So it was a 36 by 48, and I, th you know, again, I'm going back to my expressionism, impressionism times, I figured, okay, Sicily did a lot of pointillism. I think I have to do this all in pontillism. And so that's what <laughs> Oh my, yeah. Well, I can see that in the foreground for sure. It's just, yeah. yeah, the light is just popping. So, do you work with a dark field to start with when you painted this piece, and then get it lighter? If this is an oil, um, so this is oil. Um, in this case, I did it the old-fashioned way: dot dot red, dot dot yellow. What happens in between? Dot dot mm -hmm. blue, dot dot those kind of colors. So, I created my secondary colors just with my with my marking, and. Mm -hmm. Um, and did you did you code out your gessoed uh, canvas with a with a color grade uh, base? Uh, base, yeah, color grade, uh, uh, paint grade, really. Uh, paint uh, grade, okay, yeah. yeah. And then, uh, uh, let's wait for this process. Yeah, no, a lot I, of it, yeah, a lot of yeah, a lot of artists do that. You, especially in night paintings, you got to kill the white off the page. Yeah. Yeah, and then so uh, you don't want it popping through in places that you don't yeah. get covered. But it, <laughs> Sometimes oh. you want to pop through, but I, I did it in sections because some parts would have to go with the dark, then the light, then we had to reverse it. So depending on what area I worked on, it was a common. Mm. Yeah, so. no, it, the light is just dancing beautifully. Uh, oh, yeah, it's a very vibrant piece. Uh, I love it. Very. Is that piece sold as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's sold. Yeah. 
we're gonna close on this piece i, lo I love this walk in the park it's just <laughs> the, and, the, and the red dress you know it, i mean there's so many movies out there the red violin the red shoes yeah. Yeah. the red dress you know and, and this uh, is my same model again oh yeah and she's in New York now, so we're having it's a kind of trouble to get her to do a modeling for me unless she does something and gets her a photographer to photograph it for her in London or in New York, and then she'll send me the images. But yeah, those, well, this yeah, this could be Central Park. You never know. It is Central Park. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> this could yeah. be Central Park. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's Central Park. Yeah. And this is this is my first piece on on aluminum. On aluminum, nice. On aluminum. So all the, you can't really see it in the bottom because the, it's hard to photograph uh, aluminum, but at the top between the trees, you'll see that gray. Well, yep. that's the aluminum coming too. And I wanted to use the aluminum color as part of the composition. Yep. So when and planning and choosing my pieces, I have to work so that the aluminum is continuously throughout the whole image. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> no, I haven't painted on aluminum, but... Uh... I've seen some uh, photography done on it and different yeah. people putting different sets of substrate. Yeah. Well, that's a great, we had a, it's a short conversation. It just goes by so quickly. Oh, there he is. There's Steven. Yeah. It was a lovely Here I is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can I tell you everything was gorgeous. And I think one of the okay. pieces I liked you said sold was the Asian guy. Oh, really? Yeah. Thank I you. like that piece. <laughs> I, well, I, I like it all, but I, I have a preference for Asians. I don't know what it is. Cause you know, we, because of you know 40 years ago no i'm just kidding anyway um so if somebody wants to buy one of your originals what's the range from from a to z uh from probably twenty five hundred dollars to fifteen thousand okay so right. and just remember that's canadian everybody so it's like that's four dollars us so yes. it's fine so there you go okay yeah so yeah very um, cool <clears throat> and we'll and I'm gonna have your link below. I do this because I don't know why I just do, but the link will be below. So if you want to buy something from Val, you can go ahead and you can click the Definitely. link and go to her website. We couldn't show everything on her website, so go there and look at her work. And I've been on your site while you were talking. Gorgeous. Everything's absolutely gorgeous. Thank so you. kudos to you, my dear. Very Thank beautiful. And the much. site is very nice. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was great talking with you. And, nice uh, talk to you, Paul. Thank you. Thanks. Thank Thanks. you, guys. Yeah. Have a great day. Don't forget, everybody, we'll be back next Thursday with another artist. Val, enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers. And you as well. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you.